Listen to it. Pork. Tonkatsu. ASMR. Blaze, it's me, your big brother. Now, I know the hair is a bit higher than mine right now, but that's all good. You've just got more expensive hairspray than that. Now, young man, I've got a challenge for you. I want to see what you can do if I give you a bento box to make a delicious dish in that next level kitchen. Promise me you won't be stingy. Good luck and call me if you need any help. Okay, there we go. Listen, Gordon, I hear you. Welcome to Next Level Kitchen, where Gordon Ramsay is challenging me, Richard Blaze, to take your cooking to the next level. And today, we're heading to Asia, where Gordon's challenged me to make a delicious at-home bento box. Now, I've already raided the platform and grabbed maybe a few too many things in typical Richard Blaze fashion. And let me show you what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about making a tonkatsu, which means pork, cutlet, which so, so very much reminds me of my mom, Peggy, rest in peace, who would make delicious pork cutlets. We're gonna do my mom's version, but with an Asian twist and put this in a bento box. So we're gonna start with a pork loin, right? So we have our pork loin right here, and this is a nice little steak, but we want to actually pound out our pork cutlet so that it's nice and thin and it's gonna fry golden brown and delicious. So to pound out our pork cutlet, uh, you know, first thing I'm gonna do also, this, this is what chefs do. I'm gonna season just a little bit, a little bit of salt. I wanna be careful because this, this recipe has some soy and oyster sauce and things that are also salty, Worcestershire sauce, so I don't wanna uh, season it with salt too much but I feel like chefs need to season every step along the way, not just at the end, not just at the beginning. So I have my pork cutlet, uh, and this could be anything. This could be chicken, this could be beef, but we're gonna use pork. Uh, I, t I tend to think that pork is a lot more tender, so it's a good go-to if you're on Next Level Chef because it's a little bit more forgiving than chicken or beef sometimes, all right? So I have my pork, I have two pieces of parchment paper right here, and what I'm going to do is very simply pound out this pork loin right here. Now you can use a rolling pin, you can use another pan, you can take out some aggression here, and you can also use some plastic wrap. And I'm not just banging on this pork loin, I'm actually hitting it and sort of flattening it out to the side, right? You can also, if you don't have a mallet or a rolling pin, you can also sort of just cut the loin and sort of open it up, butterfly it if you will. Okay, almost, almost, just on the edges, a little bit. Okay, there it is, okay. Nice and even. And you can see I have my pork loin that is now pounded out nice and thin and even, okay? It's nice and thin so it's gonna cook quickly so it's gonna retain its crispiness once we season it, okay? So there's my pork loin. Now we're gonna get into the fun part of making a cutlet at home. Standard breading procedure. Here we go. Eggs, right? So I'm gonna do, this is a little trick. If you, wanna, if you don't wanna get shells in your eggs, crack the eggs off of a bowl and then into the pan or the bowl that you're using, not on the side of a bowl, because that somehow attracts the shells. I don't know ke chemically what's going on, but you wanna crack your eggs off to the side and then into the bowl that you're using, okay? I have my eggs in there, I have a whisk. And standard breading procedure, this is how most golden brown delicious things start. We have flour, we have breadcrumbs, and we have this egg mixture, okay? And I'm literally just taking two whole eggs here, whisking them up. And when we're making our breading station, we do wanna make sure that the whole piece of pork can go into the dish. So you don't want a little bowl, because it'll get really, really messy, okay? We don't have to get crazy there. Another thing I like to do with my eggs when I'm frying something is I add a little bit of hot sauce or a little bit of seasoning, right? Like I said, chefs season along the way. Uh, and this will just, again, make sure that everything that we're tasting is seasoned really, really well, okay? All right, so there we go. We have, right now, our flour, our egg wash, and our panko breadcrumbs. Panko breadcrumbs are Japanese breadcrumbs. If you have just um, Italian seasoning, that's gonna work just as well. All right, flour, egg, breadcrumbs, standard breading procedure. We have our pork cutlet, and the first thing we're gonna do is start with the flour. So the order here is very important, right? So the first thing, and what you wanna make sure is that one hand remains dry and one hand is wet. So I guess 
we'll have to go cross-handed because I already started with this hand. But I take my pork cutlet, and I'm just going to put that in, in our flour over here. Okay, this is the dry hand. Okay, and then just really, really shake off the excess. Give it one of these. Okay, there we go. So now we have it covered in flour. Then, wet hand, okay, we're going to go to the egg wash mixture, right? And the same thing here is we want to make sure that the egg wash gets all over the pork cutlet or the chicken. In this case, it's pork. But I really want to make sure that there's egg on every little piece of pork so that the next part, the breadcrumbs, sticks to this pork cutlet. And then again, wet hand to this. And now my dry hand comes in. And then I just sort of want to bury this pork cutlet in these Japanese breadcrumbs. You could take these breadcrumbs and you could uh, put them in a food processor if you want. But I actually like when we don't do that and you get this nice, crispy little texture. Yes, you could do potato flakes. You could crumble up potato chips for this if you wanted to get really, really creative. That might be nice, actually. All right, there we go. So now we have our breadcrumbs all over. Here we go. So we have our oil heating up. This is going to be, again, my favorite term, neutral flavored oil. You just don't want it to be the expensive olive oil or expensive sesame oil. God forbid, please don't fry in truffle oil. That's way too expensive, and you're going to lose that flavor anyway. Shallow frying is different than deep frying. We're not going to totally submerge uh, our pork cutlet. We just want it to, the oil to basically cover half of the item that we're frying. We wanted to see it just barely uh, start to smoke, maybe a little bit. And while that's going, uh, we're going to make our uh, sauce. So our sauce has got some of my favorite ingredients of all time, one of which is ketchup. I don't care. Come at me, social media. I love ketchup. What does ketchup have? It's sweet, it's acidic, but it has the flavor called umami. Umami is what wakes up your palate. It's literally what makes your mouth water. So we have our ketchup in there. Our oil's just about hot enough. And now I'm gonna add another one of my favorite ingredients, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce, a little drip in anything works. But for this recipe, we're going equal parts ketchup and Worcestershire. Worcestershire has tamarind in it a little bit of anchovy in it, all of these flavors, again, that have tons of umami. I need a little whisk. This is Next Level Kitchen. We throw things, whisk. The one-handed whisk grab. Only happening on the top level. Okay, my oil's hot enough. We're halfway into our sauce. It's time to start cooking our pork, our tonkatsu right here. Okay, it's breaded all the way. Let's see. And now you can see, I, I see some of the, the bread that's dripping in the oil. It's starting to crisp, so I can tell that the oil is hot enough. And the moment you've all been waiting, me to shut up. You can listen to it. Listen to your food. Everyone, come here. A little ASMR. Pork, tonkatsu, ASMR. My new alarm clock. Okay, that pork is frying up. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I have uh, my... Tongs over here. We want this to just be golden brown. That's got like 30 more seconds on it. Let's see if I can add the other ingredients to my sauce real quick before I burn it. A little bit of soy sauce. More umami right there. Uh, a little bit of oyster sauce. What is oyster sauce? Yes, there's oysters in it. Um, think of it sort of like as Asian barbecue sauce. It's also got a great viscosity to it. Add a little bit of that. We're going to just whisk it up. We got almost everything in it. We're going to whisk it up. We're going to add a little bit of brown sugar. And listen, this is why most Asian cuisine is just so delicious because it's all of these big flavors, salty, sweet, umami, right? It just wakes up your palate. Your palate just explodes with flavor, and that's what this sauce is right there. That could be good for anything. A burger topping, again, sort of a barbecue sauce. Back over here, I'm liking how that looks. I'm gonna just even turn off the heat over here. Let that cook on the other side. We want pork to be just cooked all the way through. All right, our salad to top this off for our bento box. We have some shredded cabbage, some radish, and some cucumbers. We're gonna toss some sesame seeds in there as well. And then a little bit of sugar and a little bit of vinegar. I mean, again, these flavors are just so, so big. I'll throw a little salt in there too, but not too much because we have so many salty ingredients that are in that tonkatsu sauce. A Little bit of rice wine vinegar. If you're using seasoned rice vinegar, which I'm not, but seasoned rice vinegar has sugar in it already. So if you ever go to the store, one seasoned, one's not. The seasoning part of it is actually sugar. All right, so here we go. That's looking really, really nice. Almost done on that other side. Uh, let, me, let me just toss real quick our salad together. 
Again, vinegar, salt, really, really fresh. I want a little color in there. So I'm actually have some uh, cilantro over here. A little bit of cilantro we'll throw in there. Sort of give our salad a little bit of color, okay? Love what that looks. Our pork tonkatsu is finishing up. So there's a tray to let this rest. I think it's probably just about done. Let's see what that other side looks like. Other side looks really, really nice. That's probably the nicer presentation side. So we're gonna come that, let that come over here to a rack or a paper towel if you're at home and you don't have a rack so that the oil goes onto the tray and not extra oil in our dish. And anytime something comes out of a fryer, just a little bit of seasoning because while it's out of the fryer, it's still got the moisture of the oil and your seasoning will stick to it better as soon as it comes out of the fryer. Okay, so we have our tonkatsu, we have our salad, we have our sauce. Oh my gosh, Gordon has challenged me to make this happen really, really quickly. We have some rice over here that's cooked. It's time to build our bento box. All right, here it is, a bento box. It's empty, but not for long, not for long. Time to plate, time to plate. We have our sushi rice. I think we'll just go on one side of this dish. We'll just add our sushi rice. Sushi rice, again, has seasoned rice wine vinegar in it, so that's why it's a little bit sweet. I like the fact that it's chewy and sort of sticky, right? And this is a meal for me, so we're gonna put a lot of rice in there. I love that. Uh, let's see, yeah. Let's get into our tonkatsu. We'll just lay that right on top of the rice. Uh, and then off to the side here, we'll add our salad. Do a nice cabbage salad with all of the cucumbers, the radish, the coriander. This is really, really fresh. So much texture is going on in this dish. We'll add a little bit of sesame seeds to the top of it. Oh, here's more garnishes. A little bit of pickled daikon over here. You gotta have your pickles. Man, this dish is on fire with flavor and color. Look at the yellow daikon, a little bit of, a lot of pickled ginger, because I'm the guy in the sushi restaurant who always asks for extra ginger. And then of course, we're just gonna finish this off with a little bit of our sauce. Uh, whew, I think we gotta do it. I think we gotta do it. I think you gotta just go right on top of it, serve it right away. Look at that, pork tonkatsu with rice, a cabbage salad, pickled ginger and daikon. And we're just gonna put the top on it and then we're gonna send this to Gordon Ramsay. And we're not gonna tell him it's mine because he might not like it if he knows it's mine. Thank you so much for watching. Now, please let me know in the comments what you think of the dish and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting videos. Thank you.